Away! A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. wild and lawless frontier of the western United States, the local sheriffs were unable to control the outlaw bands that roamed the new territory. The honest ranchers knew that their only real protection against gunmen and criminals was the masked rider of the plains. Without his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, the winning of the West might never have been accomplished. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the Chandler Ranch. Saddles waiting in the trail ahead. Hi-o, Silver! Away! Leaving their great horses behind, the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached the crest of a hill. Below them, when they paused, was a sweeping expanse of rich prairie land where cattle grazed. In the distance, a white ranch house set in trees described a large figure L. Occasionally, the small forms of mounted men appeared. Uh, keeping close watch, Tonto. Oh. How many men did you see when you tried to reach the house? Maybe a dozen. You saw a dozen. There's probably another dozen you didn't see. And every one of those men a killer, ready to shoot on sight. Oh. I hope that from up here we discover a way to get in without being seen. But it's out of the question. That's right. In the daytime, there's no cover anywhere. We could be seen approaching a mile off. Uh-huh. Tonight, they've got a guard every few paces, as you learned last night. How is your arm now? Bothering you any? It's all right. Six inches to the left, and you'd have been dead. It come heap close. Well, now try that again. Although it seems impossible... I'm willing to swear that Amos and his wife are prisoners in their own home, but we can't prove it. The sheriff just laughed when I told him my suspicions. Him heap big fool. Well, I don't know that I blame him. He'd neither seen nor heard anything out of the way. Why should he take the word of a masked man? Uh. What's that? Not no. Listen. Color plenty happy. If he is, he's got nothing to do with that ranch, Kimosabe. You look. A cart. A donkey cart. Uh, He's leading it. That's something new, Tonto. Look heap funny. Uh, uh, What's he uh, singing? You hear now. Uh, 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 don't go, Luther. You want to get stubborn again? Why can't you all keep your good nature the way I do? Now, hi there. Come on, Tonto. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Take what Luther says personal, friend. He don't mean nothing by it, just his way. Luther? Well, he'll answer to Luther. You know that he likes to, though. <laughs> he 
This here's a right dignified donkey. He's got a full name, and he'd a little rather he used it. A full name, huh? Uh-huh. Luther Lecurgis Jones. Ain't that elegant? Huh. Uh, well, unusual, at least. What was that you were singing? Singing? Oh, oh that. <laughs> Jux, that was just one of my poems. Yep, make them up out of my own head. Good at it, ain't I? Not bad at all. What's all that you have in your cart? Oh, just pots and pans and such, friend. I sell them and mend them and make what I can at it. It ain't much, but it keeps me in Luther, so it serves. A potter, huh? <laughs> and potter's my handle. Potluck potter's what they call me as knows me. Potter's my name and potter's my trade. <laughs> right suitable, ain't it? <clears throat> like to hear a poem I made up about it? I don't know. No, but reckon it better not. It weren't one that Luther took to. Some he likes and some he don't. Sentimental Luther is. Just yearns for poems about pretty girls and flowers and such. Gets a look on his face like he was swallowing sugar. Others he don't hardly listen to. Seems to pain him. Headed any place in particular? Well, sort of might look in that place below there. Might settle something or find something to fix. Amos Chandler's place, Tonto. Uh. Well, good day to you, friends. Ever get tired of outlaw, you might try being potters. <laughs> it ain't half bad. Now, come on, Luther. We got to Wait. Oh, boy. Sorry, friend, but we got to... Butler, I think you're just the man to do us a favor. Huh? Think so? We're not outlaws, as you believe. You can take my word for that or not, as you wish. Whatever we are, the favor we ask won't get you in trouble with the law. Oh, taint the law worries me, friend. It's, it's Luther here. Couldn't do nothing that'd shame me in front of Luther. That ranch, you see, is owned by an elderly couple, Amos Chandler and his wife, Nellie. Don't say. We're friends of theirs, but we can't reach them. See that bandage on Tonto's arm? He got that trying to get to the ranch house. Weren't up to nothing bad, was you? I doubt that anyone would be allowed on that ranch if certain men suspected it would interfere with their crooked plans. But you could go anywhere, Potluck. You might even find the opportunity to deliver a message. A message? Yes. But more important, I want a written answer. You're mighty puzzling, friend. Potluck, I have reason to believe that Amos and Nellie Chandler are prisoners. And that they're not permitted to leave their home. No. Luther! You hear that? Hear what this fellow is saying? I can't get the law to act because I have no proof. But if I could show the sheriff a written statement by either Amos or his wife backing up my claim... Then the sheriff would have to act. That so, Injun? It's true. Sounds queer. Will you do it, Potluck? Will you try to smuggle my message to one of them without being seen? Mm, well. It won't get you on the wrong side of the law. Uh, friend, I'll tell you what. Yes? I'll put it up to Luther. He says it's all right. I'll do it. But if he don't, then I can't help you. Well, Luther, set your mind to it. Do we help these fellas or tell them we can't be bothered? <laughs> Well? Luther says he don't see nothing again. it. Just give me that message. Inside the Chandler Ranch House. Well, what is it this time? Please. Out with it. Hook, if you'd only get a doctor for poor Amos. What's that? What's that you're saying, Nellie? Now, Paul, no need to get angry. I don't need no doctor. Don't want one. Fit as a fiddle, I am. And that's one thing we agree on. All this pretending ain't been fooling me. But Amos ain't been out in his bed for past a week now. Mm, I could get up. I was a minder. That all you called me in for? Well, I, I thought... You thought what? If if the doctor could just call one. He ain't gonna. But why... Once would be enough. The next thing, the sheriff would be showing up. I wouldn't say nothing. Nellie? Don't you ask nothing of him. You and me, we don't deal with yellow polecats. Who are you call the polecat? You're a polecat. Shut you... your face before I smash your one. Oh, oh, don't no. you start your whining again, either. You didn't act like this when we first hired your hook. <laughs> when you first hired me, I didn't know that old mine of yours over the Arrowhead Flats was worth nothing. Mm, you won't get it. Ain't no hurry. <laughs> me and the boys, we're living good. They'll pay. You'll come to time after a while. Ain't nothing else you can do. It, it's stealing. Well, now, is it? Stealing, you call it, eh? <laughs> well, who in places gives a hoot what you call it or what you think about it? Get this straight. 
You sign over that mine. Don't think that afterwards the law will get it back for you, neither. Why, you... You want to know why? Because I've worked for you for three years without there ever being a word said again me. Fact is, you always brag me up. The law figure you gave me that old mine, never suspecting it to be no good for anything. Found out afterwards it was, then tried to go back on your bargain. <laughs> Try and talk your way around there. Yellow polecat! Yellow polecat! You call hey, me that hey, again? Amos, hook. No. Well, she... yeah. Hook, you in there? Well, listen, Hook. Huh? There's an old fellow out here, kind of crazy. He's got a donkey and a cart and a mess of tinware. Calls himself a potter. What's he want? Well, he says he'd like to see Miss Chandler. Wants to see if she's got any cooking things to fix or if maybe she'd like to buy a... Tell the old fool to clear out. But I... You hear me? Now, listen, Hook. I wouldn't do that if I was you. He couldn't do no harm. Anybody able to talk can do his harm. No, I'm telling you, Hook. We've got to play this right. We've kept him from seeing too many folks already. There's going to be talk before long. Turn away a crazy old coot like this fella that there ain't no reason for turning away, and you will have talk. Now, look, why don't you do this? Throw a scare into these two. Tell them what'll happen to them if they run off at the mouth. Then let the old fella in. You'll go away and mention how he's seen them, and folks will forget their suspicions for a while. Hmm? Huh? Don't you think that makes sense? Just a second. Listen. Yes? There's a peddler outside. I'm letting him in here. While he's here, you can talk with him about the junk he's got for sale. Yeller, polecat! Ah, forget it, you old fool. Well, like I said, you can talk business with this fella. But I ain't gonna be far away. Don't lower that window there. But if you just so much as hint to him what's going on here, he don't leave here alive. We don't want to see him. But, but Pa... It'd be nice having someone to talk to. You can suit yourself. It'll be all right, Amos. Please. Mm, well, uh... Please. Uh, send him in. <laughs> Spike. Yeah? Send him in. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had made camp in a grove of trees on the same hill where they'd met Potluck Potter. They'd expected Potluck's early return, but an hour lengthened into two, then three, until finally the afternoon faded into evening and the evening into night. Tonto looked anxiously at his friend. You think they're trouble? I don't like to think so, Tonto. Oh. Potluck's been gone a long time, but there could easily be an explanation. They might have found a lot of repair work for him to do. Around the ranch house, there would be. He couldn't find an excuse to leave until the work was finished. Maybe that's it. I don't like it, however. If anything happened to that old fellow, I'd blame myself. Him fine fellow? The kind of man who's learned how to get happiness from life. He doesn't ask much, so the little he receives satisfies him. Uh-huh. Did you notice how he trained that donkey of his? He'd pretend to speak to him and get answers. But the donkey answered only when Potluck touched him with that stick he held in his uh, hand. Uh, uh, Tonto, see... He must have me. There's one thing that makes what we're doing difficult. What's that? Amos and his wife were pioneers in this territory. They came here years ago. They're old now, and most of their friends have died. Oh. Uh. In the last ten years, they probably haven't left their home once each six months. Scarcely anyone has called on them. That right. Add that to the fact that Hook has taken care of most of the business of the ranch for the last couple of years. You can see why few people would find anything suspicious about the present situation. Ah. So unless we... Did you hear that? It's donkey. Oh, wait. Come on. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. That sound didn't come from the trail. It come from that way. Yep. Which is the last way Potluck would choose if he were coming here to meet us. We afraid him hurt. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Oh, Silver! Curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Hearing the bray of Potluck Potter's donkey, the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced from camp to determine what was wrong. The masked man was the first to sight Potluck's broken cart, overturned, and with one wheel gone. Look ahead, Tonto. Uh, Rain up. Oh, 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 Silver. Oh, oh fellow. Oh. Potluck may be innocent. Me, look. I look. You get the donkey. Tonto, do. The equipment is gone at any rate. Probably was scattered when the cart first overturned. The donkey must have dragged it for quite a distance afterwards. Having trouble with him, Toto? Him come. Nothing here to tell us what happened. Hot luck, him not there? No. I didn't really expect to find him. Either he was thrown out of the cart, too, or... What you think? Or he never left the ranch house. Uh. I can't imagine Luther here running away of his own accord. Or if he did, that he'd cause all this damage under ordinary circumstances. That right. Looks to me as though somehow Hook learned Potluck's errand and held him. That heap bad. The donkey was likely whipped. That's what made him run away. Look, here. Yes. See, Welt? Yes, Tonto. I was right. They beat the poor fellow hard to leave marks on his hide like that. Now what do? We got Potluck into this. It's up to us to get him out. Ah. Which is easier said than done. There's no doubt but what Hook's men are still guarding the house. It'll be no easier to get through their lines now than it was before. We get through. If worst came to worst, we'd try to rush them. Well, there must be a better way. Huh? I think... Yes, I've got it, Tonto. Ride ranch house? Soon. But first, we'll return to camp. Come on, Kimasabi. Back to the saddle. ranch house, Spike and Hook held guns on Potluck Potter. So you thought you'd sneak a note in here, huh? Thought you could pull the wool over my eyes. Well, you made a bad mistake. The only satisfaction you get out of it is knowing it's the last mistake you'll ever make. <laughs> Shucks, friend, I figured to live to make heaps of them. And you figured wrong. I, I wish I was 40 years younger, I do. How do I? Do me a heap of good to give you the licking you got coming. I'm so awful sorry, Mr. Potter. Uh, Potluck's my handle, ma'am. And my friends will call me so. There's no need to feel sorry. Say nothing's happened yet that's so bad. Don't rightly expect nothing will. You ever see a deaf year old coot than him, Hook? Loco or not, it won't matter for long. I made up a poem about you, friend. Eh? Goes like this. <clears throat> a rattler's mean as poison sin. Crawls upon his belly. But side a hook, but gosh, he'll look a mighty friendly. Hey, Thunder, you whiskery, plague bitten, mealy mouth, rhyming old fool. What the? Hook, out the window. Look out the window. How to catch? How bad to burn it? Who's to blame for it? Never set a fire with arrows. What's that? That's the truth, Hook. That's the truth. Pull the arrows. Somebody shot burning arrows to the roof from back away. Get out of my way. Get water from the well. Start a chain of buckets. Big Jake, Utah, follow me. Clem, you watch the stables don't catch fire. Get a hustle on your breast and slow movie mavericks. Put out the fire. Having seen the bunkhouse burst into flames as a result of Tonto's carefully placed arrows, the masked man and the Indian raced to their horses and leaped to the saddle. They won't put out that place in a hurry, Tonto. Uh, I think that for the time being, they'll forget about keeping a guard around the house. What's happened to that fellow we saw stationed near that oak? Him fight fire. Good. The others? Them fight fire, too. And the coast clear. Stop for no one, Kimasabi. Fight your way to the ranch house if necessary. If they get me, you keep on. Get inside that house and keep hook out. Tonto, do. Now, get him up, Scott. Come on, Silver, come on. Them not see us yet. Too busy with the fire. Hurry, boy. Get him up. Get him up. To the front door. Uh. Now, pull up. Oh, 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 Silver. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, oh. Get going, Silver. Around the house, old boy. Get up there. Get him up, Scott. I've seen us. Uh, come on. Hold the door the minute we're inside. Me, do. Oh, it's the masked man. There's no time to talk. 
Cook will be here in a moment. Barricade the doors. Flatlock, lower the windows and close the shutters. Donald, give me a hand here. Pile everything that can be moved against the doors. We'll show them. Mr. Chandler, get behind that table. Master Tunnel, first. There. Open up. Come out of there. You hear me? Come out of there. That's you, Hook. You're playing right, it is. And if you want us, come and get us. But stand clear of that door. Discovered the trick that had permitted the Lone Ranger and Tonto to enter the ranch house. He shouted orders to his men. Get away from them doors, I tell you. Get away. You want to get blasted out of your boots? Spike. Spike, where are you? Right here. Where you been? I Never up. mind. See that tree over there? Think you can climb it? Well, sure I can. Get up in a hurry. You'll be able to see into the room over the tops of the furniture they pile against the windows. Take your rifle with you and let them have it. You what? You talk, Bat. Where you want us? Go around the back. See if they don't make a break for it. They do, don't bother to yell. We'll hear you shooting and come running. Now get. And we're on our way. The rest of you, listen to me. Scatter. Keep out of each other's line of fire. But rake that room from end to end. Throw that into there till you ain't got no more. And when you eat, I'll bring you extra, savvy? All right. All right, boys. Let's see you follow orders. Amos Chandler's sturdy chairs, tables, and benches piled up to make barricades as nearly bulletproof as possible, the Lone Ranger directed the resistance to Hook's attack. He found, however, that Hook was not to be underestimated. The latter had placed his men carefully. At the end of a half hour, the Lone Ranger, crouched beside a window, beckoned to Tonto. What matter? Look at my cartridge belt. Bullets gone? I just reloaded my guns. I took the last I had. How are you fixed? Me not got many either. I wonder if Amos has any in the house that we can reach. Take my position here. Watch those bushes across the way. I thought I saw someone moving there a moment ago. Uh, I'll see how we stand. Amos. I heard you, stranger. I heard what you and the engine were saying. Well, I reckon we're getting close to the end. You have no cartridges? Ain't kept none in the house for the past ten years. Wish I had now. Well, we'll make the best of what we have. We'll hold our shots until we know they won't be wasted. Oh, they've stopped firing, have they? Tonto, keep a close watch. Oh, my, you've been hit something fierce. I'm so sorry, so sorry you good people had to get in a fix like this just for Paul and me. Don't blame yourself, ma'am. But they just... Don't you realize you should stay where you were? You're in range of their bullets here. I can't do something to fix you up somehow. I'm not wounded, just scratched by splinters. These cuts look a great deal worse than they are. Paul, ain't it a shame when we've come so close to living our lives out that that Hook couldn't have just got us without taking these other folks along? Mm, don't seem right, Nelly. Forget that kind of talk. We're not beaten yet. Potluck. Or me? Come over here. Sure thing, friend. <laughs> See the way I let him have it? I reckon Luther had been right proud of me. I think he would have been, Potluck. You too, Tonto. They won't try another rush for a while yet. Oh. Going to have a council of war, friend? Something of the sort. Bullets all gone. Just about. But I've thought of a plan that might work, Kimasabi. Uh -huh. I'll explain it to all of you. But first, I want your word that whatever I order, you'll obey without question. Why, sure. I ain't setting myself up to be the leader here. How about the rest of you? No, we'll, we'll sure thing. Thing. What Very do well. you say? Well, this time, I think we pretty well know how Hook placed his men. Uh-huh. Tonto, you said two men were stationed at the rear door. That's right. You saw no others there? There are just two. In that case, my plan will work. Those two have been placed there just in case we try to leave by the back way. Thinking of overpowering them? No. We're going to take the furniture away from that window directly across from me. I think it can be done without attracting Hook's attention. And then what? When I give the word, Tonto will swing open the shutters. I'll jump out. And as I cross toward the stables, I'll shout as though I expected the rest of you to follow me. No, I don't and like I think that, Hook and his men will believe for the moment we're all trying to escape by the same way. That will draw them to this side of the house. They ain't just sure of savvy, then. Don't you see it? While they're looking for you to escape through the window, you'll be leaving by the back way. Silver and Scout shouldn't be far off. Amos, Tonto will help you and your wife. Given two minutes leeway, 
And I'll promise you that. You should get free. Oh, no. No, we couldn't never do that. No, Luther, never stand for it. No, stranger, Just we... a moment. You each gave me your word you'd follow orders. Yes, And but... we won't argue. They started up again. Now we'll have to work fast. Now we'll start moving that furniture. Me take your place. Move the furniture. Uh, I'll go do it. Potluck, give Amos a hand. Friend, what will I tell Luther? How am I going to face him again when he knows I'll let you do this for a worthless old coot like me? We won't discuss it. About ready, Kimasabi? Yes, it's ready. I'll make it, Kimasabi. Don't believe for a moment that I won't. Don't risk the chance of safety just because you fear for me. Me do what you say. Good fellow. Please. Oh, please listen. It ain't worth it. It ain't. There must be some other way. I thought there would be, ma'am, but firing that bunkhouse didn't work out altogether as I had hoped. You won't change your mind. Watch me, Tonto. When I drop my hand, open those shutters. Uh. The rest of you stand aside. I... The fire did work. Amos had brought your neighbors. Listen. That sounds like the sheriff's voice. Tunnel, throw open those shutters. There'll be a roundup, and we're taking a hand. Hook, stand where you are. You settle with me. So that was one of the reasons the masked man said he had Tonto fire the bunkhouse, Sheriff. So his folks would see the fire and ride here. We saw it, ma'am, but it took a while to make the ride. Honey, where'd that masked man get to? Wasn't he in the red skin around here just now? Look there! Adios, Colonel Powell's Silver Highway! Go on! And them horses, see him just fly over the ground. Maybe I'll think me up a poem. Oh, but sure. How are you going to put into words a sight like that? you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank you.